everyone. Welcome to the Comics Who Show. I'm your co-host, Patrick Lugo, and with me is co-host, Curtis Vegeta. As a kid, I loved Kung Fu movies. So, I went to Chinatown, trained with a wise teacher, and became a Kung Fu master. Sounds simple, right? Not really. My journey, like the study of Kung Fu, was as arduous as it was rewarding, filled with as many secrets as revelations and as much heartache as triumph. It's a defining moment in my life, and while I began studying Kung Fu to learn how to fight, what I discovered was a way to live. Martial arts never came easy to me. I was far from talented and even farther from being the chosen one. It was only through years of tenacious perseverance that I was able to make steady progress. And so, I was surprised when my master told me that I should teach Kung Fu and share the art outside of Chinatown. I did just that and taught Kung Fu to my own students for 20 years. I always wanted to do more to share the art of Kung Fu with others, but was limited by only being able to teach those within my immediate area. What about the rest of the world? Then one day, I had one of the deepest insights about Kung Fu. I realized that the punches, kicks, throws, and myriad of martial maneuvers are merely the delivery system for the true essence of Kung Fu, the philosophy and way of life. Having worked for years as a professional artist and storyteller in film, animation, video games, and comic books, I realized that I could draw upon this unique skill set to share my passion for Kung Fu with the greater world. And so I created Shadow Ghost, a Kung Fu comic by a Kung Fu master. The first issue is created entirely by myself, from story and art to colors and lettering. Every panel is filled with unprecedented accuracy in its depiction of Kung Fu by a comic book creator who knows from first-hand experience what it means to be a Kung Fu master. Battle Ghost is a martial arts coming-of-age story about a young man whose search for the truth about a legendary hero leads him to study Kung Fu and, through a twist of fate, becomes part of the legend himself. For the first time in comic book history, you can immerse yourself further in each issue with Kung Fu Skills technology, powered by Tiger Crane Kung Fu. Scan the QR code at the back of the comic and follow an exclusive link to an online instructional video where I teach you Kung Fu techniques featured in this series. With Kung Fu Skills technology, you can do more than just read about the Shadow Ghost Saga. You can become a part of it. The first issue is completely finished and ready for print. All that's needed is for you to make a pledge of support so that we can fund the printing of the first issue. Together, we can share the wisdom of Kung Fu with the greater world. Shadow Ghost is the story of Kung Fu. It's about the people, the art, the culture, and the philosophy. It's my story and the story of those that I've learned from, taught, fought, and loved. Join me and become part of the vibrant legacy in a place and time where we might not be the chosen one but where we can make a choice to be part of something bigger and greater than just ourselves. I'm Sifu Curtis Fujita, and this is Shadow Ghost, the Kung Fu comic by a Kung Fu master. Hi, I'm Plugo, author, illustrator, comic creator, and the art director for Kung Fu Magazine for more than 20 years. But I'm here to talk to you about a project that's really special to me. It's the middle grade graphic novel, A Tiger's Tale. Imagine the story of tigers and dragons and martial artists and monsters. So when I launched the campaign for A Tiger's Tale Volume 1, I did not know what to expect but it succeeded thanks to a group of passionate backers. It was also awarded the Make More Comics art grant that year. 
and was later featured as part of an art gallery exhibit. And that's why I'm coming to Kickstarter, to cover production fees, printing, copy editing, things like that. Books completed, with the exception of a few pages I've set aside for color over the course of the campaign. This turned out to be a popular feature of Volume One's campaign, so I thought I'd bring it back for Volume 2. I think it's going to be great fun for everyone. Hope you'll support the campaign. I'm very excited about it. Thanks for stopping by. Hello, everybody. Good morning, Curtis, or Good afternoon, morning. depending on where you're listening in on. Yeah, yeah. Good afternoon. Good morning. How's everybody doing? How you doing, Patrick? I'm all right. I actually got a little bit of rest. So that I woke up bright eye and bushy tailed. I don't know if I mentioned to you, but I had a an interview on another show earlier this morning. So oh, I didn't know that. Okay. I, I woke up and hit the ground running. Nice, nice. Good. Good. So you're all warmed up. Um, for those that don't know, we are the Comics Foo Show. And uh, I'll turn over. Pa Patrick always says this part way better than me. So, Patrick, why don't you describe what the show is and what it's about? Could you oh, well, the it? Comics Foo Show stands at the crossroads between Kung Fu comics and all sorts of pop culture definitely i'm excited about our, our guest today uh patrick you're a little bit more familiar with her and you, you interacted with her a little bit more so maybe you could give an introduction kind of tell people about who we have yes i'm really excited we have with us right in the green room tamika brown she's the ceo of ue comics this is a self-publishing platform designed to support and promote comics graphic novels and most importantly, manga in the U.S. Their vision is to reinvent how people create their content. You know, they want to share creativity and they want to inspire their audience with their ideas. I love that. So, and the cool thing is that they've currently just launched their first Kickstarter campaign. It's the Manga Gisi by creator Kona Chaisi. And I'm probably destroying all of those pronunciations, but... You know, I'm from New York where we talk normal, so <laughs> my apologies. Anyway, without without further ado, let, let's welcome our guest. Okay, come on in. Hello, welcome, Tamika. Hello, hi, Tamika. hi everyone. How you doing? I'm lovely. Thank you so much for having me. Very well. Oh, it's, our, it's our pleasure. And can you just uh, remind me where you're calling in from? I know it's not the Bay Area, California. Of course, I am all the way on the East Coast in Virginia, and the 757 is where we're uh, stationed at. Nice. Oh, excellent, excellent. And so how did I do with the, uh, your introduction? Did I mangle any of the terminology? Uh, you know, it, it was beautiful. Uh, the creator is Kona Chisei, and the story, excuse me, the title is Chisei. It means sacrifice in Japanese. Or excuse me, uh, sacrifice slash scapegoat in Japanese. Oh, so more like a sacrifice rather than to yes. sacrifice. Yes. Oh, excellent. How exciting. Um, and and how's, how's, the camp, how's the campaign going? This is, Patrick was mentioning this is your first campaign. Yeah, so this is our first campaign ever. And we're launching this for the creator, Konichi Say, because we would like to raise funds to push this manga into distribution and just to cover the final uh, copy editing and proofreading charges like for an editor um, and also to pay for like printing costs as well. Uh, the campaign is both myself and the creator, we personalized the campaign to include really exclusive and limited um, features that would only be exclusive to Kickstarter since this is our first time. So it's very special to us. Oh, that that's awesome. <clears throat> and we'll definitely um, take a look at that Kickstarter page. But first, I, I'm hoping you can give us a little bit of uh, the secret origin of Tamika Brown. You know, what what how is it that you uh, discovered comics? 
what drove you to actually um, start UA, UE Comics, if I should say? Of course. So me and my family were originally from Jamaica. So, um, but we're a military family. So we've been all over the place. I, I've always had a love for manga, anime, comics. I really believe my first ever anime that I watched was either Dragon Ball, like the original seeing Goku naked on TV. (laughs) 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 Yeah, I mean, it's amazing how censorship has changed since we were kids. I remember. And then I also have uh, Sailor Moon that used to come on cable TV and then eventually went on to like, I don't know if you remember Tsunami Mm -hmm. and our late nights there. And I have been lucky enough and privileged enough to be around an art community um, to listen to their stories and to see the issues that are going on within the publication sector especially with IP rights. Um, and it's just, it's not, it's not good, you know, and it doesn't really truly benefit creators. So me and a couple of friends, we got together and we were decided to make a company where creators will always own their IP rights. We have no interest in your IPs. Um, any type of partnership with our company is proved purely on like a licensing fees. So that at any point in time, uh, we're, we like to consider ourselves a stepping stool to your goal in order to bridge the gap between where you want to be and how we can help you get there, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. That's great. Yeah, we were just taught, Patrick and I were just talking about this the other day on, a, on another live stream uh, on Pops Van Sant's CromCon. And um, that's such an important thing, right? Is is the idea of the, the the creative rights and finding people that are kind of you can align yourself with, you know? I mean, that's that that that's kind of that's so important. And fortunately, with distribution and digital media and Kickstarter and crowdfunding, it's like we finally have that that opportunity, you know. So that's that's great. That's great. And can you tell me what what does the UE stand for in, in UE Comics? You know, that's a beautiful question. That's when cool. I figure that out. You will be the first person I get back to. <laughs> like it's still a, it's a work in progress. <laughs> you know, I I think I think I think it should be a crowdfunding goal. Once once you're fulfilled, right, fully fulfilled, yes. then you will unveil to the public the true secret name of UE Comics. How does that sound? That's beautiful. I would, <laughs> I would definitely do that. <laughs> Alternatively, you can make it into a contest, right? Where oh, like yes. you know, what you name it, you know. I would say you experience comics, even though the you is not quite the same you. It, yeah, it, I like that. We should make it into a contest. Let the let the fan base name the UE or what UE stands for. That's a great idea. That's a, well. I already see several people watching. So if you have an idea for what it should be. Don't be shy. Chime in. You know, you got you got the you got the CEO here right now, ready to take your suggestions. So keep going. yeah. Put it in the chat. Put Let's see what chat. we can come up with. Yeah. And you know, this whole contest thing would be a lot less violent than an actual <laughs> tournament where the you know the winner gets to decide. Exactly. A little bit of bloodshed never hurt. <laughs> I mean, you know, we are familiar. You know, we do call ourselves the Comics Foo Show for a reason. You know, we've. Uh, We've all taken our licks here in, in the school of hard knocks, let's say. Definitely. Definitely. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, well, that's great. So, 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 you know, we briefly touched upon it at the beginning of, um, before the show, pre-show. You, you, were, you were kind of explaining the unique nature of your relationship with the creator, the circumstances of, you know, of, of her uh, persona. Let's just put it that way. So maybe you could, you could elaborate on that. Of course. So the creator of Jisei works under an alias. Um, So we call her, she goes by Kona Chisei. And she prefers to remain anonymous because she wants to focus on the story. The story is very close to her. It's taken her over five years to develop um, before actually starting to create and produce her work. And due to, and I'm sure a lot of creators can understand this, but due to the particular um, 
environment she is in as a manga artist, manga creator, and a female manga artist, manga creator, she prefers to stay away from any type of um, fame or any type of um, showcasing so that it doesn't distract her from her fans who are the most important to her and are helping her, you know, keep her head up as she presses through trying to get through 10, 15 pages uh, in like a two week span at sometimes. Wow. Wow. That's excellent. Well, when they're, they're, that's a, a long running thing in, in Japanese manga culture is somewhat anonymity. Like we were talking about, you're mentioning Dragon Ball. And I know uh, Akira Toriyama, the, the creator, he used to never show his face ever. You know, and he would even he would draw little illustrations himself, but he would have the face mask like we wear now because of COVID. He would wear that in, in his illustrations because he just wanted to focus on the task, you know, and not mm -hmm. be mobbed by fans. And, and there's something um, kind of noble, right, in, in this age of social yes. media. It's all about me, 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 you know, so that's that's really cool that she has her eye on the prize. Yeah, and it's proud because her avatar is actually like a penguin, which is so wonderful and is filled with like personality. So when we were constructing the Kickstarter and uh, we got the team together to like just so that uh, fans can get an inside uh, personality of what she's like, her avatar truly explains her personality. She's kind of she's out there. She's very out there. And it's funny. That's cool. That's cool. Well, I mean, one one thing that's fascinating is that I'm I'm looking at at the website uecomics.net, and you have a fairly comprehensive library of titles, right? It's not just the one comic we're talking about today. So I was just wondering if you could um elaborate a little bit on what's you know on on the fact that you have so many titles available, and then also why you chose this particular title to bring to Kickstarter in comparison to what you have in your library? Of course. So currently what's on the library, I want to make sure it's clear that we do not own any rights to those, uh, to what's in the library. Those are all independent creators that have um, submitted their works to us and we actually promote their work and help them gain viewership help to gain confidence. Um, as you can see, there's the library is from professionals to non-vice, you know, very amateur level work, but it's their first time putting themselves out there. And it takes a lot. It takes a lot of courage to, you know, put your work out there. And we wanted to make sure they had that safe haven of saying, hey, we're just happy you did it. We just, you know, and it's, so when we decided to move with Jisei, she has a final product. Her volume one is over 200 pages. She includes like really specialized comics uh, so that the fans can see what goes on behind the scenes of making Jisei. And she was ready to put her work out there. Um, it took her five years and I'm just so proud of her to getting from point A to point B and she trusted us with getting her story out there, getting her manga out there, and really um, help her make her dream come a reality, which is what we strive to do every day. That's great. That's that's truly excellent, and that that really kind of ties into you know one of the things that we love to do at the Comics Foo Show is you know, I mean, we love to spend time talking about Marvel movies too. <laughs> But really, the chance to like get into the trenches, let's call it, right, of actual creating comics with with artists and with you know people who are enterprising, right? People who want to who who want to do more than just you know draw the next Spider Man, right? They want to they want to make something for the, for themselves, and so you know, it's so it's exciting to see that from you. It is, and um, for her story, it's more of you know how like in a lot of animations there or excuse me anime or mangas it's, it's like the power of friendship to like help you conquer the day she is completely even though she supports it and loves those mangas she's like that's not realistic because sometimes you know when you're in a really dark spot or you're experiencing you know some type of suffering sometimes there's nobody there to save you you gotta like save yourself 
and she decided to put that into into her manga um and she, i don't want to say that she's trying to like overturn the traditional shonen type of uh ideology but i believe she prefers to add a more realistic take into what issues very brutal very dark very explicit but issues that everyone can relate to and the choices that are made because of it definitely it sounds, sounds like it's a lot about empowerment you know and and that's something that you know i i was looking at your your website you know which which in the compliment you and what's really nice is it has an identity to it like you, oftentimes you'll go to like an indie publisher kind of thing and it's just you know like a regular old wordpress template and you know there's really not any visual identity you know and you have this kind of cool urban but kind of colorful look to it you know and I, and I watched the, the the trailer you know kind of like a little sizzle reel that was on the page um was that something that that you arrived at organically or was this something that you really drove home or like right off the bat did you know okay this is what we are this is visually how we're going to represent how we do things how did how did you come up with that how did that come about I really like bright colors and I and, and to me bright colors not only attract but it you know generates some form of positive feelings if that makes sense yeah. and like let's be honest like in our particular sector there's a lot of bad that comes with the good hmm. from the whether you're separating the creative aspect from the business aspect there's always going to be some type of um, challenge that we're gonna you're gonna come across and I want it and stating back to the floor, I just I want, it's very important that creators feel comfortable and they feel um, motivated and trusting that, hey, I'm coming to you. I know you say you're not interested in our IP. I want to make sure that, you know, you really understand that we're not going to have any interest in your IP. And then we're going to promote, support you. We're going to encourage you um, to continue to push out your work any way that we can. Definitely. No, that that that's great. I mean, I think I I thought whoops, what happened? Oh, there she is. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, technical difficulties. Um no, but you know, I was I was just thinking the other day, you know, especially and unfortunately, you know, sometimes it happens a lot, not just at the big levels, but at the independent level, right? The 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 company or the enemies prey on the creators, prey on their enthusiasm, prey on the fact that they do love it and will turn a blind eye to the business aspect are things that really they shouldn't have to, you know, they should be able to trust, you know, the people they're going into business with. And unfortunately, oftentimes that's the same uh, group that takes advantage exactly. of, of, of these creators, you know, and, and it, it's nice to hear you talking um, and that you're, you're, you know, the passion that you're talking about and the fact that you're so enthusiastic about it, you know, um, just like, 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 uh, you know, sometimes you'll talk to somebody that's in that power position or in that CEO position. They don't have no idea what the book's really about or, you know, or anything like that. So it's a really good book. You should buy it, you know, but, you know, so here you are explain that. And to prove that point further, you, you, you kind of given a little bit more in depth about the story behind the scenes when we were, before we started the show, could you, could you tell us a little bit more about the actual story and the setting of, of this? Of this first yes. Book? Yeah. And I, sorry, I get really excited when I talk about this. <laughs> um, so holistically, the story is about um, a prisoner. Um, she committed a, like a horrible crime against her adoptive clan, which landed her in, in a prison. And it's just not, it's not any prison too. It's like beyond, if there was a prison higher than federal prison, it would be that times 10. Like this was the prison of all prisons. And she's been there her whole life. And um, the warden, she's later recruited by the warden. And it's a thou part of uh, a group of assassins. So prisoners turn assassins. And they go out and literally just kill people uh, or whatever does the bidding of the warden. However, in this particular story, instead of it making making the story just an assassin, an assassin story or whatever, it's an, actually a redemption story where the main character is forced to deal with the choices she were she made that not, not only landed her in prison, but the impact that also um, led her down the road that you know she necessarily didn't really want to take, but she has to take. 
And then sometimes when you're going down a path, there's like branches and, you know, you get rerouted and, you know, there's a whole bunch of routes that you have to go through. So it's a, it's a longevity type of story. This is only volume one. So it's just the beginning. She's already working on volume two. And it's, I'm not going to lie. Like, this is a very painful story. Like, do not expect to read this and feel good <laughs> inside or feel, you know, oh, this is going to have a happy ending. No. When we say it's a dark and brutal story, this is about suffering. You know, this is, it is what it is. And the creator wants, as much as she loves her fans, she wants to make sure her fans understands that, you know, what she's putting out there is, you know, a reality that many people face on a day-to-day -day basis. Definitely, definitely. Well, and, that, and that's kind of one of the, the fascinating things about manga-oriented stories, right, is that they can go in these directions that you would never see or really delve into that much or for a long period of time in a, in a Western, you know, comic book. So that's, that, that's excellent. Um, I was thinking maybe maybe this might be a good time now that you kind of uh, explain that to us. Maybe we could take a little bit look at the um, at your Kickstarter, kind of look at the the yeah. reward here. Does that does that sound like a plan? Yes, because I'm very excited about the rewards as well. <laughs> good. Um, I don't know, pa Patrick. Do you have um, do you have access? To there we go. Awesome. Let's take a look. Just at a moment's notice, oh, and, so, and so here we are. Let me let me uh, let me press play on our video. Yes. Yes, oh, look at that. See, I've been scrolling through all this stuff already. <laughs> I couldn't help myself, but we'll start here. All right. And this is like also a big shout out to all of the collaborators that helped me with this manga. Excellent. Love those graphics. <laughs> Excellent. Very cool. I love the look of it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears went into that um, oh. under a minute animation. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That, I mean, there's a lot of lot of lot of little details there, definitely. Overcome your pain. Yeah, I mean, having done an animated trailer myself, I can relate. It's, it's it's a painful process, but so necessary. Curtis, I don't know how you pulled yours off. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I, had a, I had a little help. I have a friend in animation, so he, he took some of the work for me. So that was ah. <laughs> all right. So here we are, stripped of her name and identity. Inmate number one one four one has was sent to endure a life sentence at the brutal Asbara prison for committing a heinous crime against her adoptive clan. Recruited by the warden to join the Ravens, an elite group of prisoners crafted into deadly assassins, Chu grows up to become one of the most notorious and vicious exec executors ever known. One day after attempting, accepting a request for assistance in eradicating malicious beings, causing turmoil amongst the reigning clans in the living realm, Inmate 1141 accepts the request and begins her journey towards unraveling her dark past, her purpose, truth, and atonements for her crime. Okay. How's that sound? That, that sounded great, beautifully worded. It is it's now setting wise, is this in the past, the present, the future, something in between? It's it's taking place in the present. Um so even though there's some segments of um, flashbacks, mm 
-hmm. everything is um, linear. Okay. Nice. Nice. And so the book is complete and you said it was over 200, about 200 pages. Did I remember that correctly? Yeah, oh. it's over 200 pages. It's a full arc. We decided um, what's important to um, Kona is that the full story, that the, her fans get the full story. Mm -hmm. And uh, so instead of just, you know, separating it into like different serializing the first arc, she wants to give her fans the whole arc all together. So awesome. her mangas are quite longer than the traditional manga, I would say. Nice. And this is all her work we're looking at here, every line. All of it is her work, but she also works with the team which is the only way for her to get um, through from point A to point B. So her team has last year came in and helped out a lot with this, even down to the shading so that she can focus on storyline and plot and storyboard and all the tedious work needed. Mm -hmm. And is this all digital or, or, or uh, how, how is she, how is it, how is it produced? Oh, digital. We use Clip Art Studio. Yeah, I love Clip Art Studio. Gosh, what a good stuff. Beautiful. Amazing. This is great. I, I've only been using it for just over a year. Still loving it, but learning so much at the same oh, time. That's yeah. amazing. This is great. One of my favorite that. pages. Yeah. Look at that monster design. That's yeah. awesome. You know, and I love the black and white because I think nowadays because of color, people just throw color on needlessly. Black and white suits the story that, that you're, you know, the, the, the tone and everything that you've been talking about that we're reading, that we're seeing, it suits the tone. It, it should be in black and white. It looks really great in that format and the shading is excellent. Very nice. Thank you. We, 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 at one point we did struggle with it, but once we got into our groove, mm -hmm. it was, it went well. It looks great. All right, so I see we've got our stretch goals lined up. Nice. But, yeah. uh, that's awesome. So, these are all the perks that every backer will get once we hit our stretch goals. Mm -hmm. Ooh, excellent. Well, I, I really want oh, look at that five colored pages. Yes. Excellent. Oh, that's, that's I'm so, rushing so through this <laughs> because I'm so eager to get to some of the the reward tiers yeah. that totally. people can get like right now. You yeah, know? totally. And so here we have, uh, let's see, there's a, some PDF options. Mm -hmm. So have I arrived at, you know, it's so fascinating. Everyone organizes their, their campaigns a little bit differently. So it's always interesting to see what, you know, how things are lined up and, and where to find items. Oh, yeah. So that's always a, a fascinating thing for me. But yeah. uh, when I was uh, asking the campaign, I wanted to make sure it was as user friendly as possible. <laughs> that was the main, I didn't want to overwhelm the backers. Totally. Oh, yeah. So, so here we're looking at the pledge $15 for the high resolution digital wallpaper that I scanned past that. It was the very first one. Let's see. Curtis knows I'm a, I have I always have an itchy trigger finger. So was it, was it a little bit further down? I think I think. Further down. Yeah, Did I go the wrong way? That's me. Right there. That's there we go. Ah, yeah. High resolution. Of course. You know I should have read the the, the <laughs> caption. I want to save this all all thirty seconds. And oh, so no. there's there's your high resolution, and this also. Gorgeous art. Look at look at look at the power of color. Just it's mostly black and white, yeah. then red, and a little bit. It, that gray almost has a little bit of green in yeah. there. I, I want to say, yeah, kind of gives it a chrome. Yeah, yeah. really. Look, and then speaking of chrome, here you have your holographic sticker. Yeah. Lovely. We kind love the chibis. Yeah, <laughs> chibis are awesome. <laughs> we were, we were just having an in-depth conversation about them last night. Yeah, totally. That's great. And then here we have the digital copy. Let's see. Uh, let's uh, scroll back. Okay, so at sixty-five, the ultra, the fan ultra deluxe includes the high-resolution wallpaper, the digital copy of. G am I? Remind me how to say it. Jesse. 
Gise, yeah. Gise, okay. And mm -hmm. um, the paperback of volume that's one? That's Siri, sorry, hold on. Is Siri chiming in? <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> the, even even Siri is excited about this campaign, so you should be too. Just, just saying. <laughs> it's the AI effect, yeah. you know. Yeah, we've we've been having lots of conversations about AI and comics, and who knew that they wanted to read them as well? Yeah, you, you know what I love is is with each thumbnail, it's the same iconic shape, but there's that subtle difference to let you know this is a different reward to the the, yeah. the high resolution one has more detail, more thin lines. Color placement is a little different. So it's a really nice, tasteful choice instead of just slapping on the same graphic, putting some words on it, you know, very, very nicely done. Very nice. And this is, you know, I mean, Curtis, have you, you know, Curtis has worked in gaming. He's worked in comics. Yeah. He's, uh, he, he's been there. So, <laughs> so he's not, he's not just talking to fill space. He, he uh, knows what he talks about. Look at this. That's beautiful. Nice. If it can negative. Which edition is that? That's the special limited edition. Um, so we're only going to make a handful of these uh, covers. One, because it's very expensive, since it will come with a very nice gloss and a completely, you know, higher quality type to get the, the look we want for that particular manga. And it's also going to be somewhat thicker than the traditional manga as well. Nice. Oh, that's yeah. great. Oh, yeah. there's the poster. There's the poster. <laughs> that's a, I yeah. love that poster. That's, that's a good that's, poster. That's really... And so Josiah's uh, weapon of choice is a double-bladed axe, I see. Yes. And, there, and it actually has some purpose as well. Mm. Well, I wouldn't want you to spoil that. anything. Yes, but... no spoilers. <laughs> I promise no spoilers. <laughs> but that's great. And Curtis, I mean, Curtis being a Kung Fu master, do you have any, anything you'd like to share with regards to the double the double bladed axe? Well, the double blade's always more dangerous, right? Because I mean, anything that's double bladed, because a lot of times the weapon, it requires more skill. A lot of the times the weapon, when one side's flat and the other side's a blade, you have more control of not injuring yourself. But whenever you have double blade, the potential for you to hurt yourself is that much higher, which means the skill grows exponentially. So, so just right off the bat, you know, and of course, from our, our Western background, executioners, you know, axe, all that stuff, you know, so great. It's a great silhouette. And I love, I love that. I don't know if it's like a Raven, but that kind of symbol is really, really nice. Yes. Really, really great iconic stuff there. Yeah. That's that's awesome. Awesome. And so Curtis, is she holding that axe properly all choked up close to the, close to the blade? Uh, well, you know, here's the thing. Sometimes if you want to get more leverage, you start at the top and you slide to the bottom as you're coming yes. down. So in that case, definitely. And as an artist, compositionally, it's absolutely compositionally the right position for that piece of artwork. So, you know, there's the balance. <laughs> Dude, these are the details that you can only find in, on the Comics Foo Show. Yes, or, <laughs> or in this book on Kickstarter now because and, it, it's inherent and, to it. Yes, exactly. And look at this. Oh, need a little. I, I've been waiting for this one because this one is the ultra, ultra deluxe plus bag. Nice. That's yes. cool. It so is can you... Oh, go ahead. Oh, and I mean... mesh on the back is best. So it looks, it looks really, really. I feel like the picture doesn't give it justice uh -huh. of like how good it really looks. Like that red absolutely pops. Wow. And cool. it's it's a bold thing to choose um, physical products. You know, a lot a lot of um, Kickstarter organizers tend to shy away from those extra things, but they, they can really make a difference. So since that's it just was our first, we wanted to go all out and do it right. And since Kona, she's not doing it by herself. We we have her back in this. So like as I was designing and doing the budgeting and everything, you know, this was the route we wanted to go with her. That's great. Really. And cool. then here, oh, look at that beautiful t-shirt. Oh, that's, awesome. that's nice. You know, the, the best t-shirts are ones that whether or not, you know, it's from a comic book or manga that just on their own merit, it stands out and just looks like a cool shirt that somebody might compliment you on. And that, that's a great example of that. That's really cool. 
Uh, yeah, I was just going to comment of, you know, over my 20 plus year of careers, I, I cannot even tell you how many T-shirts I've designed for, you know, <laughs> for tournaments or for specific schools or for specific events, you know, not just in the martial arts. I've done, you know, event tees and stuff like that. And what you said is so true. Like there's such a difference between a T-shirt that's just iconic like this one. And then the T-shirts that are just plastered with logos everywhere. And every person who has a say wants to make sure their logo is in there. And then all of a sudden, the actual art is just incomprehensible. So the, the logo on the sleeve, excellent, mm -hmm. excellent. Did you design this T-shirt? Did you outsource the design? I'm, I'm just I, curious. I did all of the designs. <laughs> so any right. feedback, comes, you can give it directly to the CEO. Good. I'm, good. I'm applauding. That's my feedback. Yeah, that's a great shirt. That's really cool. Ooh, and, nice. and here it is. I, I had to stop at that T-shirt, but I wanted to share the aluminum bottle. Nice. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. And 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best to not go on a rant on the on the on the horrors of plastic water bottles and their impact on society. So stop me now, Curtis. <laughs> That's why we went with aluminum. These are reusable bottles. That's great. I love it. Very cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. And if we go down lower, you get, um, everyone can see Meet the Team, where oh, nice. we get to give a shout out to everyone who contributes. The first <laughs> one, of course, Kona. Yes, definitely okay. like that. Uh huh. <laughs> love it got the, de the, the essential details birth date likes dislikes nice and uh, everyone who has helped and continues to help on the team her assistants her line artist uh, um, a, a lot of hard work went into this and it, it's, it's just wonderful to see everyone who like gathered together to really help her, you know, make this manga what it is today. That's great. And then of course, as you can see, the expert artist went, he didn't want any chibi. He wanted to show his talent. <laughs> so we were going to promote that. <laughs> so he opted with his take on the monkey king, it looks like. Exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Oh wow! And I'm so sorry about the noise. My sister's oh. dog is also decided to make a visit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we're big animal lovers yeah. here too. I have an epic. I have an epic beast myself who I've had to lock out of this uh, this room. Otherwise, he'd be making demands. So yeah. So you need you need to apologize on my behalf. Uh. Awesome. Oh, yes. And we are printing with Comics Wellspring. Um, they're going to, they're in the USA. So we'll be able to have better control on shipping time. So, you know, backers aren't going to have to worry about, you know, if they're going to get the manga, if they're going to get their perks, everything's going to come at the same time. Excellent. That's great. Yeah, there's a whole other what many Kickstarter, but this is something I learned the hard way during fulfillment for my first Kickstarter campaign. But there's a, a whole other, like no matter how intense the campaign is during those 30 days, it's also intense when the campaign is done and you're, you're sitting there working on the details. And look, there's Pops stopping hey, by to say hey. <laughs> Pop show the other day, and Pops is going to be airing a, a replay of this uh, probably later tonight. Awesome. Or so, so I'm to get into the, the video. So great to see you. Pops is amazing. I think he's running his own con right now, and he found the time to come over and hop and say hi to say hi to. So thanks, Pops. Oh yeah, yeah. Pops Van San is just a, a tireless advocate for comics in all forms, and his goal is just to twenty four seven make sure people know that there's one more comic to be read. So. Tamika, are you are you on a uh, Pops's uh, Facebook group, Comic Related Madness? 
I will like to be. I would love to be. You should, uh, yeah. Start start posting stuff there. And Pop Pops is on there. He has his whole community. I'm always posting on there. Pops is so po he's so positive because it's like you know you'll post stuff in different groups and you know nobody likes or doesn't. Pops always make sure to give a like to kind of support. So yeah, um, you check it out when we're done. Definitely. Uh, of course, comics pops. Co comic related, comic related madness, and I'll, I'll friend you or, or, um, as well. And I'm, I'm sure Patrick. Thank will, you. Yeah, yeah, but it's 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 a great community. Really, Pop Pops is amazing. So yeah, excellent. And one thing I wanted to mention about the rewards, like I know I keep saying this is my favorite, this is my favorite, but this is actually top favorite. And what we're offering, we're also bringing to the table, is that in certain perks, I believe it's our later perks. Um, backers can actually be featured. Uh, we will create them into a featured character and actually be a part of the manga. Nice. And then if um, they get to one of our rare uh, perks, we'll actually animate them and feature them in the animations um, that we do to promote the mangas. So if anybody wants to be animated into a manga, you can choose to be a hero or villain likely you're going to die at some point or another within <laughs> <than> that. <laughs> but we we'll promise to make you go out fighting strong. Nice. Um, so is this the tier right here, the Jasai fam? Yes, where mm -hmm. they're featured in an animation. And then right above it, I believe I listed as lovers. Nice. Yes, it's where they are featured as an animated character. That's so, great. Uh, Kona will take the image after we only, I'll ask them like a few questions. Kona will take their image and then you'll be in the manga. And it, it'll be really great because you'll be in, um, how can I say this, uh, volume two, moving into volume three. So you'll have a lot of different um, references we'll offer you to determine you know, if you want to be a hero, if you want to be a villain, regardless, you're going to die, but it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> you, what you, matters you, is that it will be a glorious death. Exactly. It, that's all. That, that's great. Well, that's what I love about independent comic books. I mean, when's the last time a Marvel or DC comic book would do something like this, where you could get a buy-in to be in the actual universe, right? And exactly. I know, exactly. You know, yeah. Yeah. So that's, I know and Pat, Patrick's done similar things and, you know, Go ahead. I, have, I was going to say that I think DC Comics did that once with a contest where you could design a character and then that character would appear. Mm -hmm. I remember because I submitted, I, I didn't win. Yeah. I wasn't expecting to win, but then the character showed up on a like a double page spread for like three pages. Oh. It was when they were publishing their weekly series, 52. Ooh. Okay. However many years ago that was. Wow. But that's the last time they did it. I know I did a similar thing for volume one of A Tiger's Tale where I had a scene that I that I knew I was going to redraw anyway because I was coloring volume one. And so I was going to redraw a scene where all the characters are, are practicing Kung Fu at the temple. And so I just, I just opened the invite and said, do you want to practice Kung Fu at the temple? And then I ended up getting three backers who, who ended up appearing as like visiting heroes working out with <laughs> other monks. And it was a lot, one of them is a real renowned Kung Fu master. So that was just like, a, like an added bonus. One of them is an old friend of mine. So that was like a fun gag. Sure. One of them was a new friend. So that was like a privilege, right? Someone who I had just gotten to know who, who made that commitment. And then the third one was a like a true Kung Fu master, which you know, was next level. So, I mean, yeah. I, applaud you. I applaud you for including that because that just opens up the door for so many potential um, interactions and, and surprises. Definitely. Yes, it's important. We want to just make sure we're building a community as we're uh, going through this process and campaigning and, you know, making sure to push that this is Kona Chisei's work. We're just backing her. We're just helping her. Because that's that's what we're here for. Oh, well, definitely, and, that, and that's the thing that's so great about the crowdfunding thing is you get to be a participant in a comic book, you know, or you get to be in the comic book. You know, you don't have to just stand on the sidelines. And one, one thing I want to point out that that I'll double check. So the book's completely finished, right? Is that is that correct? 
Yes, that's, we did. That's huge. Yes. That, that's massive. And 200 pages, no less? I mean, there's so many horror stories on crowdfunding campaigns where people put all this money in and uh, never see the book, you know? So you, 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 you have a book that's already completed. That's massive. And two, at 200 pages, a click, that's crazy. That's, that's a, people really should back that up. That's amazing. That's yeah. huge. You know, I mean, and like I, I've, I've backed campaigns, you know, with, you know, created by actual like comic industry professionals. <laughs> and even then, you know, it's still a little bit of trust. You have to, you have to put the trust in that they're going to, they're going to get that colorist to finish it and they're going to get to the finish line. So the fact that, People don't even have to wait for that, that they just know that it's the books there waiting to happen. And they just have to decide whether they want a bag or a bottle or both or the exactly. T-shirt, you know, and that's 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 major. That's major smarts. So, I mean, as a as a first campaign, that's you've made so many good choices and you've got such such incredible ambition. But I, I'm not surprised it kind of like lines up with the vision that you've been telling us about. Yes, uh, and I really appreciate it. We've been getting really great feedback. We appreciate everyone who messages us and interacts with us and, um, you know, support our social media and supporting our campaign. Um, because as our first, obviously, I'm very nervous. Um, I understand it's all or nothing. So anything helps, even if it's just $5. It, it really does make a difference. Definitely. And sharing. I mean, that, that's one of the things is even if monetarily you can't support you know, people can share it and get the word out to other people. I mean, it's networks within networks. And if you do support, please share. I mean, that's a huge thing. I mean, it, it, that that's the big thing that I'm learning is so much about community. I mean, so many people that backed my thing were people that were friends, you know, colleagues, things like that. And then if they share, it goes out to their circles. So so I, I definitely encourage everybody to, to, to pledge and, you know, support and share, you know, this project. Yeah, my, my mantra... This is, and you're welcome to use it because it's very tweetable. Is you know, support is as simple as a share, right? Just those few words. I, I I end so many of my tweets. I end so many of my posts with just that line because it's it's true. You know, all they got to do is they, they could just share the post and that that's enough. You know, if they want to buy a copy, awesome. If they want to buy like you know my special deluxe variant, or if they want to buy your T-shirt, or Curtis's deluxe edition. That's great too. But, you know, it's really about building those connections. And and that's like the one thing, like, even though there's, there's a risk and even though like, you know, 110%, I want to see your, your campaign succeed. The, the, one of the silver linings is that you're going to learn so much on that first campaign, like no matter what there's value to be found, even if it's those handful of new backers that you're meeting for the first time, it's like networks like this, the chance to talk about your work to new friends. I mean, all of those things, that's really what makes Kickstarter, you know, worth pursuing, I think. Totally. Well, definitely, as we're, we're kind of winding down, is there any further updates or, or um, appearances on other shows or things you have lined up? Or are you open to other, I, other things like this? I am open. I am engaging. I am willing to do anything. We're on a campaigning trail right now. So my schedule is open to everyone and anyone. Great. Um, and what, what's the best way people can get a hold of you if, if they if they want to schedule an appearance like this? How what's the best way for them to get a hold of you? Oh, you can shoot us a message, uh, a DM on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, you can email me personally at uecomics at gmail.com or send a message on our website to our admin team and they'll get it to me immediately. Uh, so any, any way is, is a great way to get in touch. We're very open and we're very kind. And, you know, we might be a little weird, but we're not that weird. It's normal in our community. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, all, we're all a little weird. Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing this, right? So. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. Excellent. Well, Patrick, did you have any last questions as we close out? I mean, you asked, you know, you asked the most important question, which is how can folks, you know, follow up with you, Tamika? So I'm glad. And, you know, I'll definitely, you know, include your contact information i'll update the descriptions where these uh where these streams show up so that people can follow up 
And, um, you know, I, I had a great time creating some graphics for you and I've posted those and I'll, I'll continue to, I mean, you supply your, your crew supplies such great imagery. So it was so easy to, and so worth sharing. So we'll definitely be, uh, tooting, tooting the horn of UE comics. And, um, you know, we want to keep the door open for you. If you want to come back, if yeah. you want to like comment on, you know, some of the other folks that we'll have joining us, you know, we try and make our conversations as expansive as possible. So the, you know, you've been here once, so you know the way. Please feel free to come back. <laughs> Thank you. And I would love to come back and, you know, be a constant participant with your show. Your show is wonderful. And I'm just so honored to even be a part because this is actually my first podcast. Like, this is my, honestly my first. So oh, we're yeah. just popping cherries all, all over the place here. <laughs> so. <laughs> you're, doing, you're doing a great job. And and, and one thing that, that I kind of learned about this whole Kickstarter thing and what I find interesting there's the comic book story, and then there's the story behind the story. Like, who's the creator? What's their vision? What are they doing? And you have such a, you and your crew have such a tremendous story. And I think even more so than as great as the book is, understand the bigger picture. You're not just supporting this book or this Kickstarter. You're supporting this community that Tamika, you know, building yes. this, you know, this this group that respects the creators that's trying to push that narrative forward. So you know, it's it's you're you're doubly investing in it. So I highly encourage everybody to do to do so. Yeah. So. All right. So, yeah. There it is. The URL is down there. This is what you should be looking at. I'm I'm really working hard at the yeah. at this pantomime. Yeah. So um so what I was thinking we could close out with after we've said our go goodbyes is that I would play this video one final time uh -huh. and then we will play our credit sequence. Yeah. And then as as what we've been trying to do, right, we, we try and do like a little bit of a Marvel thing where we play something a little extra at the end of our credits just to see, you know, just to give a little added bonus. So I'll start with playing this and then we'll we'll track through our various other videos. How does that sound, Curtis? Sounds like a plan. Tamika, such a pleasure. Good luck with everything. And we look forward to hearing hearing about the continued Thank success. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. All right, take care. All right, great. So first up, let's uh, let's press play on uh, on this one. As a kid, I loved Kung Fu movies. So I went to Chinatown, trained with a wise teacher and became a Kung Fu master. Sounds simple, right? Not really. My journey, like the study of Kung Fu, was as arduous as it was rewarding, filled with as many secrets as revelations and as much heartache as triumph. It's a defining moment in my life. And while I began studying Kung Fu to learn how to fight, what I discovered was a way to live. Martial arts never came easy to me. I was far from talented and even farther from being the chosen one. It was only through years of tenacious perseverance that I was able to make steady progress. And so I was surprised when my master told me that I should teach Kung Fu and share the art outside of Chinatown. I did just that and taught Kung Fu to my own students for 20 years. I always wanted to do more to share the art of Kung Fu with others, but was limited by only being able to teach those within my immediate area. What about the rest of the world? Then one day, I had one of the deepest insights about Kung Fu. I realized that the punches, kicks, throws, and myriad of martial maneuvers 
are merely the delivery system for the true essence of Kung Fu, the philosophy and way of life. Having worked for years as a professional artist and storyteller in film, animation, video games, and comic books, I realized that I could draw upon this unique skill set to share my passion for Kung Fu with the greater world. And so I created Shadow Ghost, a Kung Fu comic by a Kung Fu master. The first issue is created entirely by myself, from story and art to colors and lettering. Every panel is filled with unprecedented accuracy in its depiction of Kung Fu by a comic book creator who knows from first-hand experience what it means to be a Kung Fu master. Battle Ghost is a martial arts coming-of-age story about a young man whose search for the truth about a legendary hero leads him to study Kung Fu and, through a twist of fate, becomes part of the legend himself. For the first time in comic book history, you can immerse yourself further in each issue with Kung Fu skills technology powered by Tiger Crane Kung Fu. Scan the QR code at the back of the comic and follow an exclusive link to an online instructional video where I teach you Kung Fu techniques featured in this series. With Kung Fu skills technology, you can do more than just read about the Shadow Ghost Saga. You can become a part of it. The first issue is completely finished and ready for print. All that's needed is for you to make a pledge of support so that we can fund the printing of the first issue. Together, we can share the wisdom of Kung Fu with the greater world. Shadow Ghost is the story of Kung Fu. It's about the people, the art, the culture, and the philosophy. It's my story and the story of those that I've learned from, taught, fought, and loved. Join me and become part of the vibrant legacy in a place and time where we might not be the chosen one, but where we can make a choice to be part of something bigger and greater than just ourselves. I'm Sifu Curtis Fujita, and this is Shadow Ghost, the Kung Fu comic by a Kung Fu master. Hi, I'm Plugo, author, illustrator, comic creator, and the art director for Kung Fu Magazine for more than 20 years. But I'm here to talk to you about a project that's really special to me. It's a middle grade graphic novel, A Tiger's Tale. Imagine the story of tigers and dragons and martial artists and monsters. So when I launched the campaign for A Tiger's Tale Volume 1, I did not know what to expect but it succeeded thanks to a group of passionate backers. It was also awarded the Make More Comics art grant that year and was later featured as part of an art gallery exhibit.
And that's why I'm coming to Kickstarter to cover production fees, printing, copy editing, things like that. Books completed, with the exception of a few pages I've set aside for color over the course of the campaign. This turned out to be a popular feature of Volume One's campaign, so I thought I'd bring it back for Volume Two. I think it's going to be great fun for everyone. Hope you'll support the campaign. I'm very excited about it. Thanks for stopping by. Chris Fujita and Patrick Rugo success on their crowdfunding for Shadow Ghost and A Tiger's Tale. Thank you very much.